Every moment, every second of life is a blessing. It all depends on where you want to sit. If you want control, if you want to be comfortable, if you want to protect yourself, if you want to get what it is that you have decided that you want to get, and you want to avoid that which you decided you need to avoid, life is threatening, life is scary, life is wrought with pitfalls and potential problems. And you end up the very same mind that created all those wants, all those preferences, and all those concepts and views, that very good friend of yours, that mind, then creates hell for you. That's the favor. It says, thank you for listening to me, that this is what you want and this is what you don't want, and this is what you need and this is what you don't need. Now that you've agreed with me, let's worry. Let's worry that we get them. Let's worry that we don't get them. Let's worry that this goes right. Let's worry that that goes wrong. And that's exactly what happens. If you buy in to the part of your mind that is convincing you that you know what's good for you, that you know what will get you into a state that you want to be in, the very act of buying that preference will cause you to worry, will cause you to fear, will cause you to go through mental perturbations that just won't leave you alone. They just start and they go on in the morning, and they go on during the day, and they go on when you're alone, and they go on when you're interacting with people, and you'll go through your day looking to see if you can make happen what you want, and whether the events that are happening are in line with what you want. It's always judging based on that which you want against what you don't want, and your whole life becomes one of anxiety. You don't know it, because very few people ever get outside of that. They consider that normal. This is just normal to be neurotic. What you have to put that in, in deference to is go deep in meditation and then come out and walk around when you're at peace. Meet people, see situations, and so on. And you realize that you have set for yourself the things that you think you need and that that drives your mind crazy. Just to want something drives your mind crazy. So basically, if you set aside what you like against what you dislike. Now, from a Western point of view, you look at me and you say, what, are you crazy? Of course I set aside what I like from what I dislike. I don't know anyone that doesn't. I mean, that's what you do in life. You set aside what you like from what you dislike. I dare you to take a look and see what the effect is of setting aside what you like from what you dislike. Do you think that the reason that likes are a problem, even when you get spiritual, you think, well, the reason that likes are a problem is because if you don't get them, then you get all anguished and problematic and bothered and so on. So I understand. So really, I'm not going to be too involved in it. What you don't understand is just the very act of setting aside what you like against what you dislike, forget getting it or not getting it, causes the mind to be incessantly active. It thinks about it all the time. It's constantly thinking about, well, how do I get this? What do I do? If, I, if you meet, let's say you decide you want to get married. Very simple one. Take an example. I want to get married. Well, what's wrong with that? Nothing, nothing. People want to get married. I understand. All right? I want to get married. We'll start with that one. Then I'll go a little further with you. All right? So all of a sudden, the simple thought, I want to get married, but of course you don't have anybody. You're not even dating anybody. All right? But that doesn't seem like that should be so problematic. Okay, you're just kind of setting aside a little preference. You know, I prefer to be married than to not be married. Big deal. Okay, watch. You're walking down the street and somebody comes up and says hello. Some guy. And I'm telling you, immediately, the mind starts. Well, what's he like? He's not bad. He's pretty good looking and so on. And you start to check him out. Or the other way around, check her out, whatever the heck it is going on. 
Don't tell me people don't do that, all right? You are judging based upon your preference system. The thing that you're meeting in this world is going through that filter. And then if all of a sudden you kind of do that thing inside your mind, you were happy before you saw the person, the person was coming, you weren't even thinking about the marriage thing, then all of a sudden this person comes, oh, hi, Ari, I haven't seen you for many years, you know? Oh, your mind starts going, and it immediately starts thinking about what you like against what you dislike. I dare you to watch. That's what it does. It, either you like it or you dislike it, and it starts doing that gig. And you get a little bit out there inside your own head, well, he's not bad, and maybe it's possible, and you know, it's kind of like this, and you know, yeah, he's working, it's a nice thing, I like guys that work, and blah, blah. And all of a sudden, some girl comes running up and hugs him and says, oh, George, where you been? I've been waiting for you, come on, you know, we have to go register for our wedding or something, all right? And all of a sudden, you go, your heart goes, like that. It's like it takes the wind out of you. I mean, like, don't you understand, there was nothing happening there was nothing happening. The person you knew walked up on the street and said hello. But you did all of this inside of you, didn't you? There was no reality to it. And it was all because of setting aside what you like against what you dislike. Do you hear me? And no matter what it is, decide, be married and decide you want to have a baby. Just decide. Oh, you know, don't tell anybody. All right? Just decide. Hey, it's time we should have a child. I want to have a child. I won't go into the details of what that will do to your life what that will do to your marriage life, what that will do to every single thing that goes on in your life. If you have that, the minute it enters your head, everything changes. Everything has a different meaning than it had before. And you can't enjoy different situations because they're not an end in and of themselves. They're a means to the end. That's what happens the moment you set aside what you like against what you dislike. And I'm not talking about getting hung up on it and being neurotic about it. Just Having a preference within your head makes happen what I just said. From that moment forward, every single thing you do passes through the filter of what you set up inside your mind, of what you like against what you dislike. And so it either creates fear, or it creates desire, or it creates anxiety, or it creates thought patterns, but all sorts of stuff goes on inside your head because you set aside these preferences. Again, you have to be able to compare that with what it is like for that not to be going on. What it's like to be able to meet somebody and let them be what they are in and of themselves. What it's like to be able to have complete experiences. Each experience stands alone. It is complete within itself. That is the comparative life I want you to see. So for example, you're married and your husband or wife come home and you feel this great joy. It wasn't, did they bring flowers? It wasn't, are we going to have a baby? It wasn't this, that, any kind of thing. It was just the act in and of itself was sufficiently uplifting. Then the next act happens, then the next act happens, then the next act happens. And each one in itself is sufficient. So you're sitting there and you know you cook dinner for your wife. She's out working and you went around and played and cooked this dinner. All right. Now I'm telling you, that act is very different than you have in your head that you want to talk about, isn't it time to have the baby talk? See, men do it too. All right. Isn't it time to have the baby talk? And you're kind of trying to softening it up that you went and made dinner tonight while she was working or something like that. While you're cooking that dinner, when she is coming home, when you are serving that dinner, it is a totally different experience if you cook that dinner for the purpose of cooking that dinner. And there was no other motive, there was no other thing going on. It was an experience that was complete within itself. There's nothing that can go wrong with that experience. I told you, I started by saying every single moment of life is an experience that is complete and whole and worth living. It's a miracle. It's an it's a, it's a opportunity for tremendous excitement and growth. Every single moment, and I'm not exaggerating, every moment. The reason that doesn't happen, the reason that the only moments that are Kodak moments are the actual wedding, the birth of the baby, the vacation in Rome, is because your mind did that to you. You will notice that all the moments that are Kodak moments are ones that you had predetermined beforehand would be Kodak moments. You said that this is something worth having happen. This is something I want. This is something that will make me happy. Therefore, when it actually happened, you wanted to 
I'll memorize it, memorialize it, and save it because it seemed like an important experience. What was it like up to that point? You worried, you anguished all the way up to the wedding. Will it go well? What's going to happen? Will the people show up? Is it going to rain if I have it outside? Will the cake be right? Will this happen? Will that happen? All the different anguishes and anxieties. Most people, you want to know why they take so many pictures at a wedding? Because most people don't go to their own weddings. It's probably the least experienced moments in your life because you made such a thing out of it that you're scared to death. You have so much anxiety. You have such a big thing going. You plan the thing a year in advance, right? And every day, all this going on, how are you possibly going to be present at the wedding? You have all these things down that are supposed to be happening. So you ruin the experience totally, and so you pay somebody a great amount of money, and you sit there and take all these pictures so that afterwards, after it's all over and it worked, we can enjoy it. That really wasn't such an exaggeration, all right? What causes that? Preference. The root of that is preference. You set aside that moment from other moments, didn't you? Your mind tells you if you set aside moments as special, that that makes them special. If you set aside moments as special, it destroys every other moment. It's that simple. So you get to where you catch on with this. You watch this. How many special moments end up being special and happening? Look at them. I mean, really, in your life so far, you can count them on one hand. Okay? There's things that you wanted to memorialize. How many moments did you miss? How many moments are there in a day? How many experiences do you consider like really important and meaningful and so on? How many moments have there been? Because every moment is an experience. And it is because what you're doing is setting aside what you like from what you dislike. And then you're aiming all the power of the mind to have or to not have. And therefore, the mind interprets every other thing in relationship to that. So that those moments aren't just about when they happen. They're about the whole time that they're not happening. You know, the ultimate example is a kid that has to go in and get a shot. Now listen, even when you're older, no one likes shots. But the kid anguishes about this for weeks in advance. He caught on that he's going to have to go in and get this booster shot or something. All right? And so for weeks, it's like he's weird and he's crying and he's carrying it on and he misses school and a thing and he throws his food and he's fighting with everybody. It's a real flaming mess. You get there to the thing and you go in. I mean, the shot takes how long? Wait, how long does it sting for? Yeah. It's done. Yeah, it's done. All right? But that's just round two. Booster shots have five rounds. Well, when do I need the next one? Two months from now. So for the next two months, you're going to do it again. You're going to think about it. You're going to anguish. So you're going to suffer. To one degree or another, you're going to suffer for this entire period in order for what? For something that, that lasts, you can even feel for three seconds? Like, you know, just a few seconds? Would you please explain that to me? All right? Same thing with your wedding. Same thing with any of these things. How long does the actual thing last? How much anguish do people go through throughout this entire process to make sure that something's right that lasts a few hours? Do you hear me? We do it with everything. That is the power of having a preference. Preference for, preference against. That child decided he didn't want a shot. Because he didn't want a shot, he suffered. If he didn't care if he got a shot or not, he would have felt a moment of pain. That is different than suffering. Pain is a worthy thing. It's a holy experience because it's real. It actually happened. Suffering is not worthy. It's not real. It is what you create with your mind. You want a definition of suffering? Suffering is what you do to yourself because you set up a preference. There's a vast difference between pain and suffering. Pain is a real experience that the body is sending to you. Suffering is what you anguish mentally. It's a mental and emotional thing. It's a psychological thing. It's something you do to disturb yourself 
because things are not in accordance to your preferences. And then you suffer. Period. Have you noticed? How do you do when things are not in accordance to your preference? <laughs> Most people don't do very well. And in accordance to how strong your preferences are, that's how bad you're going to do. You mean, like, if I don't want something to happen and it happens, that's how bad I'll do? No. It's much bigger than that. I wouldn't mind it if that's all it was. If you really, 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 really don't want something to happen, then you suffer all the time. Let's say you have a phobia about snakes. There. That's a really, 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 isn't it? If you have a phobia about snakes, you're afraid to come out here. You're afraid to walk across a field. You're afraid to get out your car in the country. You're afraid of a million things. It's like all the time. If you park your car and you really have a phobia about snakes, and you park your car, and when you go to your car, you open the doors, you look around with a flashlight, you do things. If you happen to be a stick or rope, every stick looks like a snake. Every rope looks like a snake. In other words, it isn't that you suffer when the thing that you don't want happens. You suffer because you don't want it, even if it doesn't happen. Who notices that? Let's get something a little closer to home because most of you don't have phobias about snakes. Let's start with something you do have a phobia about. Let's say you're afraid that people won't like you. Anybody relate to that? Say you're afraid that people will reject you. You're afraid that you'll say something stupid when you're amongst other people. Let's say you're afraid that people won't like you, that you won't be accepted. Anybody have that? Anybody got it to the point of phobia? You want to know what? That one, everyone has to the point of phobia, therefore it's considered normal. He has a situation where he don't want people to not like him. He don't want to feel rejected. He doesn't want any of this stuff going on. Okay? So all of a sudden he's sitting there in presence and there's a group of people around and he says something wrong. He gives his opinion. And somebody turns around and says, what are you, crazy? Didn't you read the thing in the paper yesterday? There's no puzzle. It said right there that wasn't happening. Now that's what you don't want, isn't it? Okay? It was like, whoa, I better get the New York Times Daily or something. You go, you go back, you get which paper? It's like, it's a big thing to people to be wrong in public like that, you know, and say things like that. Or somebody turns around, you mind your own business, you're walking down the hall of your high school, and all of a sudden everybody's laughing because somebody posted a kick me sign on your butt or something, all right? And you turn around and you say, oh, God, I mean, it's like, oh. Those are fun times. Those are the moments you savor, you know, and take like to remember and take home. Those are the ones you put in the album. Okay, that could happen. We tell these stories. If I stopped, each of you would have a story, something. Maybe, probably that was a little strong for you. That probably never really happened to you where everybody laughed and pointed at a stupid thing. Other things happened, okay? However, because you don't want that to happen, tell me how much that preoccupies your mind. How much, when you stand in the presence of people that aren't laughing, do you not want them to laugh? How much do you think after you've said thing, was it right and what are people going to think or something like that? How often do you think after you hang up the phone after a conversation, you know, what did you say? Was it right? You should have said this, blah, blah. How many times do you ever think if you see people talking, maybe they're talking about you? How often do you think if you're standing in a line alone or eating dinner alone somewhere in a restaurant, you know, that maybe people think nobody likes you, you know, what's wrong with you or something? It's like whatever goes on inside of you that has anything to do with not wanting to be viewed, just viewed badly in the eyes of another as being not acceptable. That ever go on? That's just like the snake. They're not rejecting you, yet it occupies that much of your time. How often before you put your clothes on? How often before anything that you worry about all this stuff about what people think of you? Just because you don't want to feel rejected. You don't want to go through your, your, your body, you've got to put all these deodorants on your body, you eight billion things, you've got to wear the just the right clothes, you got to, if you park your car a little diagonally, oh my God, what will people say? I mean, people get pretty interesting about the whole thing, all right? If your house has any peeling paint, what will they think? You know, if the lawn has weeds, people get weird. They get way out there, don't they? That is suffering. In relationship to not having that go on, that is suffering. What if the alternative to all of that is to feel peace? Is to just be in the presence of people and just enjoy being in the presence of people? You can get to that state. What is causing all of this suffering and all of this neurosis? Preference. That's the root of the whole thing. It is because you don't want to feel rejection. 
that you have to have your whole life filled with the thought of rejection. It is because you don't want to see a snake that you have to fill your whole life with snakes. So the very thing that you set aside that either you like or that you set aside that you don't like, your thinking is what makes your life happy. If you don't have to have what you don't want, or if you get what you want, you'll be a happy person. No, no. To set aside what you like from what you dislike already makes you unhappy. It already does it. It is guaranteed. I don't have to curse you. Don't worry. I'm just pointing it out to you. I didn't make it happen. You are causing your suffering. You are causing your anxiety. You are causing your anguish because you are setting aside what you like against what you dislike. Now, is it possible to actually live a life without doing that? The answer is yes. Yes, it is possible to live a life without doing that. How? Find your contentment and your joy in the moment, in the actual experience that's taking place now. Let that be whole and complete. If you meet somebody and you like them, and you know, you go to a park together or do something, you just happen to interact for one reason or another, and you enjoyed the interaction, then enjoy the interaction. Let that be a thing in and of itself. Don't put in your mind, I hope we get to do this again. Because if you put in your mind, I hope we get to do this again, instead of looking back and feeling the joy of the moment that happened, you will look back and feel anxiety as to why they haven't called again or how can you run into them again. You all of a sudden took a positive moment and turned it into a permanent anxiety. Isn't that amazing? And it all happened in the very act of setting aside what you like from what you dislike. Either one. It doesn't matter. They're the same. Just say, I want something to happen. Just say, I don't want something to happen. And you are going to suffer. You're going to ruin your life. Now you say, well, that's pretty strong. No, it isn't strong. Your life is a beautiful thing. Every moment is a beautiful experience. Every moment is an opportunity to explore the experiences of life and to explore yourself. Because every experience in life brings up a different part of you, doesn't it? Have you noticed? Like every minute, there's something different going on inside. It's just a different landscape. It's a different way of thinking. It's a different way of feeling. It's a different energy flow. It's a heart that's opening. It's a heart that's closing. It's a million, billion different things that shift inside as things shift outside. So all of life gives you an opportunity to experience new experiences outside, and it gives you an opportunity to learn more about the nature of yourself, of your being inside. What's wrong with that? Why can't that be a thing in and of itself? So somebody came and I was walking in the woods and all of a sudden I, a stick cracked and I got scared. I got scared into somebody who's walking behind me. Okay, that's it. Wasn't that neat? No. No, it wasn't neat. Why? Because you don't want to get scared, preference. I dislike that experience. Therefore, I don't want it to happen again. Therefore, I'm going to, for the next two hours, watch carefully and shine my flashlight around to see whether anything else is going to happen because I didn't like the experience of feeling that fear rush up inside of me. So now that one experience that could have been a fun experience, a rush of energy, a rush of fear, became something that ruined the whole rest of your walk. Don't tell me you haven't done that. The problem is nobody calls you to bay on that. Nobody talks like this and sits right down and makes you take ownership of what you're doing to yourself. And if you do it enough, you will be neurotic and you will not find things that make you happy. You will only find anxiety all around you. And so you've got to come back and take responsibility for the state of your life. But when I say that, I don't mean get married, have a child, get your job together, straighten out your finances, take responsibility for your life. You have to take responsibility for the experience of your life, for the willingness and ability to experience what's happening in your life. And every moment is beautiful. Every moment is worth experiencing, is worth having. They are not preliminary moments that lead up to something you want, and they are not preliminary moments that are heading toward someplace you don't want to go. But that's how you live. 
And I'm telling you, those in-between moments get filled with the fact that you haven't gotten yet what you want, therefore you may not get it, i.e. anxiety, or get filled with the possibility that you might indeed be heading, this might be a precursor, toward heading toward what you don't want, and you know you don't want it, therefore fear and anxiety. So in both directions, you become filled with fear and anxiety. Fear that you won't get what you want. Fear that you will get what you don't want. How do you break that? Stop setting aside what you like from what you dislike. Go to the root, to the root of the problem. The way you do that is to focus yourself in the moment. If an experience happens and it causes a shift in your energy inside, immediately say to yourself, good, good. Right away, because right away the mind wants to say, no, <laughs> I don't like it. All right, now what's supposed to happen? I don't like it. Whose fault is it? And what can I do about it? How do I stop from happening again? No, right away you've done that, all right? If an experience happens that is positive, that you feel you like a rush of energy, all right? Just say, good, good. Something happens that you don't like, good. In other words, I'm glad that these experiences are happening to me. And that's the end of it. I enjoy the experiences that are happening to me. I enjoy the experience of happiness. I enjoy the experience of sadness. I enjoy the experience of beauty. I enjoy the experience of repulsion. I enjoy the experience of pleasure. I enjoy the experience of pain. Whatever it is that is happening naturally that comes up inside of me, good, good, thank you. Every single experience is the same. They are all experiences. They are, in the vernacular, what happened next. <laughs> right? the, the whole universe has been passing through time and space. This is what happened next. If you will do that, you will lose this preference consciousness. If you are willing to enjoy and experience what is actually happening, and all of them are okay with you, then why do you care what happens? And you will start to get to the point where you'll see that the moments are more exciting if they happen by themselves. And that the only reason you weren't able to let them happen by themselves is because you had preferences. You had a preconceived notion of what you wanted to happen, your preconceived notion of what you didn't want to happen, so now you must control all of it. You're wrong. You don't have to control it. What you have to do is experience it. And if you are willing to experience the moments fully as they unfold, you will begin to feel the joy and contentment and peace inside of you. And in truth, this is the only way to free yourself. You will never get what you want, and you will never avoid what you don't want. Oh, you will for a minute. So let's say, watch, let's say you don't want to see a snake. You really have a phobia. I don't want to see a snake. I really don't want there to be a snake when I open that door. Oh, please, God, I don't want you to pray. It's good. Pray. I don't want to see a snake when I open that door. Okay, now imagine how happy you're going to be when you open that door and there's not a snake. Now we're done. No more stuff about snakes. It's over. Give me a break. The very fact that you would be that way about not wanting to see a snake means it will last for one billionth of a second that you open the door, there's not a snake. Well, at least it's not there. Maybe it went further in the house. <laughs> so you're not going to get away from it, are you? So this is the pain you create for yourself. The more you want something or don't want something, the more it possesses every moment of your life. And therefore, it can't be satisfied. Because it's never over. It's never over. The only way it will be over is when it leaves the mind. But it won't leave the mind just because an experience happened or didn't happen. Okay? I don't want to be hit. I don't want anybody hitting me. I'm scared to death. I don't want anybody hitting me. So you go into a situation with some gruff people. Oh, oh, I hope they don't hit me. They didn't hit you. Okay, now we're all through with not wanting to be hit. There's nothing going on in your mind about hitting. What, are you crazy? Now you go back and tell people, my God, it looked like they were going to hit me. It's like all you talk about, it's all you do. The mind is causing all of this trouble. The world is not causing this trouble. And so your alternative to mind, listen to me, the alternative to mind is experience. Mind is an inner concept that is trying to replace real experiences. Replace the inner concept with real experiences. And don't ask me how. You have to go out of your way to not have that happen. Real experiences are actually happening. Let them 
be with them, appreciate them, honor them. Do you know that eventually you'll worship them? You will actually, they will move you so deeply that the very experiences that you used to avoid or cling to or do things with, the very fact that they come and go by themselves is like unbelievable. It moves you so deeply as they're passing by. Like, whoa, look what happened. Far out. And you'll see that what change they cause in you takes you where you want to go. It frees you. It liberates you. And you feel great joy and peace and love. This is how you grow into God. This is why they say, be in the moment. Be here now. It's not so much that there's something so holy about the moment. What's the alternative? <laughs> I've been discussing it all night. <laughs> it's, like, it's sort of like, it's very simple, all right? Be here now or suffer. <laughs> okay. It's not like I'll make you suffer. It's like if you're not here now, you're going to suffer because that's where you went instead of being here now. You left the experience and went where? The consciousness left the experience and went into the mind. And the mind is going to be about preferences and aversions. And the preferences and aversions cause turmoil in the mind and they cause anxiety. You know, if any psychiatrist or therapist or anybody ever try, you know, if you get a book, you know, like the causes of anxiety, the book should be one page long. Okay, the cause of anxiety is preference. The cause of suffering, the cause of suffering is preference. Setting aside in your mind what you like against what you dislike is the cause of all mess. The alternative is to not do that. How? Experience the moment. Live in the moment. Honor the moment. Worship the moment. If you will put your whole being into the moment that exists, you will do fine and life will do fine. Believe me, you both will get along very well. Plus, you will already feel joy because you took as an end. How about I put it this way? Each moment is an end game. Each moment is an end game. Just to meet somebody, that's the end of the relationship. Now, if you happen to meet them again and again, and again you're like you're married, you know, they're always there, and again and again and again and again, fine. But each moment's an end game. Everything, every meal you eat, every situation you do, everything you go through is an end in and of itself. It has no other meaning. Its meaning was for you to experience it right then. Did you? Or were you busy trying to give it other meaning, like some grander meaning? So like, why are you going to school? I'm going to school to graduate. How about you? Well, my God, you're missing your life. What's the meaning of life? Well, I'm living so I can die. Well, why don't you just say that? <laughs> In other words, the whole purpose of the process is the end. I'm going to school to graduate. That is a ridiculous reason to go to school. Well, why did you take this class? Because it's required for graduation. Well, why did you read this book? So I can pass the test so I can graduate. Like, what are you doing? Wasting your entire life for four years, whatever it is, for that one moment of four hours in the hot sun, you know. <laughs> Believe me, it's not going to be worth it. Graduations are a drag. So you have to catch yourself. You have to catch yourself. So you won't do this with your life. Don't get married to have children. Don't go to school to graduate. Don't go to work to earn money. Don't write an article to get it published. You saw how everyone, get, did it pass through your mind how I could take any one of those and do what I just did with everything? No wonder you're not happy. No wonder people are not happy. If you go to work to earn money, then you worry about who makes more and you pay enough. And do the thing. How can you enjoy your work? If you get married to have children, we already know what can happen with it. Go to school because of the joy of learning. You have to enjoy the experiences you are having. All of them are beautiful if you will let them be. And so you start to work with yourself. And I'm telling you, just say good to whatever happens. Good. That's your first reaction. Good. I'm glad. I like it. Good. Okay? And then try to be open not preference, but open to the different experiences that are happening to you. And you will see that over time, each experience is a flower, a gift within itself. And it will help you. It is your teacher. It is your teacher. 
And every experience is there to help you grow if you will let it. Mm, Jai